It's official, Spokane Public Schools and the Central Valley School District will allow their youngest students to return to part-time in-person learning in two weeks. We'll break down their plan. Say her name! Yeah. Two officers have been shot. Dozens have been arrested in Louisville tonight after a grand jury declined to indict the officers who shot and killed Breonna Taylor, a decision that sparked protests across the country, including in Spokane. The rain has arrived in central Washington as it slowly marches its way eastward towards Spokane. I'm tracking just how much rain we'll get, not just tonight, but for the rest of this week. We are tracking two big stories tonight. Protests turned violent in Louisville after a grand jury declined to indict the officers who shot and killed Breonna Taylor. Meantime in Spokane, a big decision by two local school districts to allow for part time in person learning. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem 2 News at 11. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Hello everyone, I'm Regina Ahn. It is official. Kindergartners will soon be able to go to school for in-person learning. This after Dr. Bob Lutz supported that idea for a safe return back to class. Our own Casey Decker has more on this story. Hey Regina, well it's big good news for eager families in two districts tonight, both Central Valley and Spokane Public Schools deciding they will start phasing in some in-person learning for some students. So how exactly will it work? Well, it's not identical in each district, but it's pretty close. Both districts will start the first phase in about two weeks, though on different days. It will be kindergartners only. At first, students will be broken up into two groups and come into the building on alternating days. Now, neither district has made it clear yet what students will be doing on their off days. The school day will start and end at slightly different times from normal in both districts. SPS will also use cohorting, meaning students will only interact in person with the people in their classroom, no mixing during lunch or recess. If everything works out with kindergarten, slowly over time, other grades could be phased into in-person learning in both districts, though at the moment, the health district has only approved up to grade two. And of course, all this will need to be done very carefully with close attention paid to sanitation, social distancing, and any sign of an outbreak that we have developed in partnership with the Spokane Regional Health District and in partnership with other school districts. So uh, as soon as uh, there has been a report of a case or a potential case, those contact uh, tracing teams will then uh, begin evaluating the situation and working with Dr. Lutz to determine which students may need to be quarantined. Now, for families who don't want to go yet back to in-person learning, you may have some options. Central Valley says to reach out to your principal for alternatives. In Spokane, you might have a harder time of it. The deadline to enroll in their virtual-only program was back in August, but district leaders say they'll try to accommodate. Likewise, anyone who wants to switch from virtual to this model may be allowed to, depending on how much interest there is and most of all staffing levels. Now, Central Valley will be hosting a webinar for families around 6.30 next Wednesday. SPS may as well. We don't know what time that one will be yet. Regina, Mark. Casey Decker, thank you very much. And for the latest on what school districts are doing and the latest on back to school information, just text the word schools to 509-448-2000. Demonstrations have turned violent on the streets of Louisville, Kentucky tonight. Dozens of people have been arrested. Two officers were shot after a grand jury declined to charge the officers who shot and killed Breonna Taylor. Prosecutors said the officers were justified in their use of deadly force. And instead, the only charges brought by the grand jury were three counts of what's called wanton endangerment against fired officer Brett Hankinson, and there were no charges for her death. Brett Hankinson committed the offense of wanton endangerment in the first degree when, under circumstances manifesting extreme indifference to human life, he wantonly shot a gun, a gun, excuse me, into the apartment occupied by initials CE. And the charges are because Hankins has fired his gun and other people in other apartments could have been injured. And Hankinson was booked and released from the Shelby County Detention Center as his 15,000 full cash bond was paid. If convicted, he could face up to 15 years behind bars. And after that announcement, hundreds of protesters gathered in Louisville and in several cities all across the United States. Police declared unlawful assembly in Louisville before curfew, which was sent by Mayor Greg Fisher for 72 hours from 9 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. Louisville Metro has also confirmed that 
46 people have been arrested so far during these protests. Louisville Interim Police Chief Robert Schroeder confirmed that two officers were shot this evening while responding to shots fired. At first in Broadway, shots rang out and two of our officers were shot. Both officers are currently undergoing treatment at University Hospital. One is in alert and stable. The other officer is currently undergoing surgery and stable. We do have one suspect in custody. And it is unclear if the shots fired were in connection with these protests. Justice for Breonna Taylor! Justice for Breonna Taylor! And in response to that decision tonight, a small protest right here in Spokane, about two dozen demonstrators came out to Riverfront Park a little after 7 o'clock tonight, and they carried signs and chanted Black Lives Matter and justice for Breonna Taylor. They went on a few small marches around the park, and a handful of police officers were on standby following them from a distance. A lot of people are now asking what is wanton endangerment. It's certainly not a charge that we hear often. So let's start with the specific charges. A grand jury indicted the former officer on three counts of wanton endangerment, which is a class D felony in Kentucky. So to be clear, the charges are not directly related to Breonna Taylor's death. Rather, a grand jury indicted that officer for firing several shots into a neighboring apartment where three people resided, endangering their lives. As for the actual charge, here's what it means in the state of Kentucky. A person is guilty of wanton endangerment in the first degree when under circumstances manifesting extreme indifference to the value of human life, he wantonly engages in conduct which creates a substantial danger of death or serious physical injury to another person. So other examples of Class D felonies in Kentucky include unauthorized use of a credit card and possession of a controlled substance. Again, that former officer now faces three counts of wanton endangerment. If convicted, he faces a maximum of five years in prison for each count. All right, let's take a break and take a look at weather. It is definitely raining out there and wind could be coming our way as well. So Thomas Patrick out on the Outdoor Weather Center. So how's it looking out there so far right now? Yeah, the rain's been pretty light and uh, in classic inland northwest fashion. I have the umbrella on standby, but I really don't think it's raining hard enough to use it just yet. What do you think? <laughs> uh, I don't I mean, I see a little sprinkles, but not too much. Yeah, it's okay. just a, it's just a few sprinkles, <laughs> just enough to wet the uh, the pavement and the concrete in front of me. But yeah, I don't think it's raining too hard just yet. But really, we probably want it to rain as as hard as it would like for our overnight hours because we'll take as much rain as we can get. Here's a live look at Doppler radar right now. You see this little rain band that's been moving, but uh, just widespread across the state through some Central Washington and is just moving into the Spokane area. So this light rain we're experiencing right now from our outdoor weather center probably likely stay that way for at least a couple hours time. These darker green shades just moving into the airway heights area as well as Deer Park up to Newport getting the decent amount of rainfall right now. Hopefully it stays that way through the overnight hours and even areas like like Central Washington Moses Lake, which have hardly seen any rain all summer. This is a brilliant change of pace. Very large weather system just off the coast that is sliding into play not just tonight, but could give us multiple rounds of rainfall as well as scattered showers for several days to come. So tomorrow, while we could start the day out with a little bit of rainfall, might actually get a little break in the afternoon hours. So it's still a decent day to be outside, but I'll show you just when will be the heavy, the heaviest rain time frames for the rest of this week and how much rain we are expecting overall all coming up in just a few minutes. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you very much. This week, the United States hit a grim milestone. 200,000 Americans have died from COVID-19. And we are learning more about what it's like treating some of the sickest patients. We had the chance to talk with an ER nurse at Deaconess about the day to day struggles on the COVID front lines. We're really good at keeping people alive for a little while here and moving them, you know, to where they need to be. But of course, we've seen some people come in. Usually they come in already like in respiratory arrest and we just can't save them, unfortunately. And that's really hard. Nurses are drawn to help people. We want to take care of these patients. But at the same time, you have to take care of yourself to be able to do that. And I think that's been really scary and very challenging for quite a few people. So make sure to join us for the rest of our conversation. That is tomorrow night right here on CREM 2 at 6 o'clock. With many students starting in-person learning, we have seen coronavirus cases being reported in our local schools. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you what we know about schools who have reported those cases.